Many believers who consciously know they are Armenians have chosen this theological system, because they are uncomfortable with some of the positions of Calvinism. For instance, they do not desire to believe in a God, who creates people knowing they are destined for hell, nor a God, whom chooses to save some and not others. They look at certain Bible verses such as 1 Timothy chapter 2 who wants all people to be saved and to come to a knowledge of the truth and conclude that Armenianism deals with biblical data like this better than Calvinism. The problem is, it really does not. The uncomfortable beliefs one might be trying to avoid by escaping Calvinism remain after embracing Armenianism. While Armenianism is a different theological system, it does not provide a neat and tidy solution to the most common objections I hear to Calvinism. Here's why. One of the most common objections to Calvinism is that the God of Calvinism is cruel. A loving God, it is argued, would not bring someone into existence knowing that this person's ultimate destination would be eternal torment. It is true, that within a Calvinistic framework God brings people into existence knowing that some will be saved and others will not. Yet this is equally true of the God of Armenianism. Both Calvinists and Armenians believe in predestination and election. After all, they are both biblical words. Both believe that before God creates a person, he knows whether or not they will respond to him in faith. There is no difference between the two on this issue. The only difference is the basis upon which he knows this information. Calvinists believe God knows who will respond to him in faith, because he has predestined to grant the gift of faith to those he has chosen beforehand, while Armenians believe that God knows who will respond to him in faith, because he has looked forward in time, and has seen who will choose him in the future. In both Calvinism and Armenianism, God has created every person knowing full well their eternal destiny. If you cannot believe in a God, who would create someone knowing they are destined for hell? You cannot believe in Armenianism any more than Calvinism. In fact, the only way to avoid this conclusion is to believe in a God who is not omniscient, by adopting a position such as open theism, which may solve your objections to this issue. But does so by adding the much greater problem of contradicting essentially the entire testimony of Scripture. Another common objection to Calvinism is that it offers us a God, who would choose some to be saved and not others. To many, this appears to contradict the biblical presentation of God as supremely loving. For this reason, they reject Calvinism and hold to Armenianism instead. However, Armenianism does not solve this issue. In fact, it faces the exact same challenge. Calvinists believe that only, those who believe in Jesus Christ will be saved. Likewise, Armenians believe the same. In the theology of both groups, God saves only those who place faith in a son. There is no difference between the two groups, and who is saved nor in how many are saved. The only difference is in the cause of salvation. In Calvinism, the cause is God's irresistible grace, which empowers those who receive it to believe. In Armenianism, the cause is the human being's response to the grace God gives to all people. Within both theological systems, we have a God, who chooses to save some and not others. Of course the objection many Armenians raise at this point is that, within the framework of Calvinism, God could give his irresistible grace to more people and does not. Thus, in their view, the God of Calvinism is not a God, who desires all people to be saved as the God of the Bible clearly does. Yet this criticism fails to recognize that the God of Armenianism is equally believed to be a sovereign God, who could do the same. Yet, just like the God of Calvinism, he does not. Why? The reason is that in both theological systems, God does not only desire that all people are saved and come to the knowledge of the truth, he also desires something else. And those desires cannot both be fully fulfilled at the same time. The God of Calvinism desires his glory above all and, for this reason, saves some but not all because to save all would eliminate the opportunity for his glory, to be displayed to his people through righteousness and the judgment of evil. The God of Armenianism desires to honor human free will above all and, for this reason, saves some but not all, because to save all would be to overcome free will. Thus, 
Within both systems you have a God, who desires all people to be saved but who, because of his allegiance to a greater desire, permits that not all are saved. He does this either in allegiance to his own glory, that is Calvinism, or in allegiance to human free will which is Armenianism. One of the reasons people abandon Armenianism in favor of Calvinism is, because they found a mountain of biblical evidence in support of God's supreme commitment to his own glory. But no biblical evidence that convinced them of God's supreme commitment to human free will. If you are watching this as an Armenian, we are not asking that you abandon your Armenianism, we are only asking that you recognize that Armenianism has to answer the same difficulties as Calvinism. Both theological systems have to reckon with the fact that God creates people knowing they will never come to faith in Him. And both systems have to reckon with the fact that the God, who desires all men to be saved does not, in the end, save all men.